Manx Radio's Countryside is brought to you by NFU Mutual. Good evening and welcome to this series of Countryside. I'm Kerry Kermode. Lately, I went along to Ramsey Grammar High School where I caught up with the agricultural students there to find out what they've been up to and also Marion Arthur, the subject leader for Rural Agricultural and Environmental Sciences. As you can hear, I'm here on my own tonight without Simon Clark. He's off with COVID, but he's doing fine and hopefully he'll be back with us next week. So getting into our programme this evening, Ramsey Grammar High School, the only school on the island with an on-site farm. I caught up with some of the students there after their open farm day, which was a huge success, to see what they've been getting up to. (coughs) So here we are at Ramsey Grammar School. We've just had the open farm day a couple of weeks ago. I'm with some of the children now. Tristan, now you're in year eight and you've been at Ramsey, Ramsey Grammar School. And part of the curriculum is rural science. How have you found that as a lesson? Well, rural science is really fun as a lesson. And we get to learn about where our food comes from and how it's produced and everything. It's um, really quite interesting. Daniel, why is it important that we know where our food comes from and how it's grown? Well, it's uh, vital because you want to know how it's obviously made and stuff. Um. And how is it at Ramsey Grammar School? You were obviously raising pigs. You're in year eight now, so you saw these pigs born. How do you feel, you know, knowing that they're going to eventually end up on our dinner table? It's quite sad, really, to see these um, piglets that are being raised up and sold off for meat. But, you know, you understand it will help a lot of people. Yeah putting our uh, pigs, sending them to the abattoir. Yeah, no, absolutely. And understanding that, and Mrs Arthur, she's, she's very passionate about the job that she does here. What other animals do you have? Chickens um, and pigs and piglets. Yeah. And sheep, but we don't have them here. And do you get involved at lambing time? Because obviously the, the lambs are absolutely lovely, aren't they? She, she has Dorset sheep, isn't it? Yeah, we do get involved. Yeah. And the responsibility of keeping animals page, you know, you have to be here before school and after school to look after them. How have you found all of the tasks? Tiring. Tiring. <laughs> it's fun and tiring, <laughs> like she said. Yeah, when lambing season comes around, we sacrifice, like, entire lessons to come out and help. It's one time we missed the entire morning of lessons. It was... <laughs> Uh, I think the lamb that was born was Poppy or Susie. I can't remember. I think, yeah, Poppy. Um, But we were there all morning waiting for her to give birth and then we had to wait for her to walk so that we knew she was okay. And how did that feel, seeing your very first lamb being born there, Tristan? It wasn't the first, but, yeah, it (laughs) was was, uh, disgusting. (laughs) (laughs) Do you remember your first lamb, witnessing your first lamb being born? Yeah, I, I, I do. It was at Akela Beg with uh, Lambing Live. I, um, oh, yeah. I got shot by lamb juice. <laughs> <laughs> so you're well prepared for when you came to uh, secondary school then. And did you choose to come in and do the, the lessons that Marion has on? Well, we don't really get a choice as it's curriculum, but um, if we did get a choice, we would happily come down and do it anyway. But, uh, yeah, well, we choose to come down to farm club mornings and evenings as well. Sometimes at lunch times we have to help out with lambing and watch the sheep's, uh, she- sheep for lambs. But most of the time now it's just pigs and cleaning out the pigs because we don't have the lambs. Yeah, there's lots of varied tasks throughout the season and that's what you'll be learning also. I remember in year seven you learned where to hatch an egg. Yeah, uh, we reared chicks in year seven. Uh, they were, um, well... They, they were messy. Um, yeah, everywhere. Um, but, yeah, we didn't really see them hatching, but we got to kind of raise them a bit. Um, uh, yeah. And what about the plant side of things? Obviously, rural science comes with the crops and all uh, alongside the animal husbandry side. Uh, is that growing vegetables, is that something you girls have enjoyed? Yeah. Which part did you get actively involved with? Well, one rural science, one rural science lesson uh, with our group, we were just planting plants like mad. I think we got 120 odd plants out, but it was crazy because we had people doing the pots, people sorting out compost, and then people bringing 
So it's like, yeah, and people bring the plants. And me and my friend Henry, we're just filling the pots with compost and then passing them on to people. Do you think these lessons that you're having at Ramsey Grammar are going to be useful in life? Yeah, definitely. If you want to take a farming career on things, it would definitely be very useful. And Daniel, what would you fancy being when you're older? I'd want to maybe go into education when I'm older, working at primary schools. But, and yeah, I would teach what I'm learning here because it would help the kids and it made them happy. And did you have any experience of this kind of rural life before coming here to secondary school? No, not really. I've been on trips to farms before, but nothing like what we're doing here. Yeah. And how do you feel when you see your animals, when you've raised them? Well, it's nice. It really helps your mental health, looking at the animals. It's really, really nice. Yeah, and I think, that, like you say, getting the great outdoors is really important. And obviously to see the chickens and the piglets that you've grown, you must be very proud. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Very yeah. proud. So on the, on the open day last week, you know, to see all the people come visit, there was lots and lots of people here. Um, was it something you were quite proud of that you were able to teach somebody else? Yeah, it was, it was really nice to teach all these people coming up to see the farm about all our different animals and about what we do here. And I do believe that in the coming months you've got uh, beehives arriving. Yeah, I believe we're waiting for the bees to arrive now. Yeah. They're here, they're here. Oh, the bees are here. The bees are here. Yeah, they're <laughs> yeah. the chickens. It's like um, 10,000. 10,000 bees? Yeah. 10, wow. No, there's 10,000. Yeah. And what, what are you going to do with... Are you going to learn to collect the honey and, and put it in jars? And Is that the, the idea of having the bees here? Um, I'm not sure. Well, uh, we're not going to be collecting the honey at the moment because the bees are kind of disturbed that they've been moved from one place to another, so they're a bit feisty. Settling, yeah. And we don't have any suits, so we don't want to go in there without any suits when we might be stung and we don't know who's allergic to bees or anything. So, so are you quite excited? Is this something very new? Uh, well, my aunt had bees, but um, yeah, it's quite new to this because I don't really remember uh, my aunt having bees that much. Yeah, that is absolutely brilliant. So what other jobs have you got coming up on the farm? What, what's the rest of the year hold for you? Well, in October, uh, next, uh, next uh, academic year, we um, have the lambs. Oh, yeah. um, the Dorsets are a pain to give birth because they can decide to give birth at like two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to get out to bed and come and help no, them then, no, Tristan? No, no, no. We're not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see how much time and effort goes into raising animals uh, and the efforts that your, your, your school has put into this? Is, is it something quite special? Yes, it's yeah. quite special, really. It's like, well, we're the only school farm on the island, so that in its own is very special. But it's quite special to have the animals as well. And it is an award-winning school at that. I do believe there's quite plenty of awards being won over yeah. the last few years. Well, it makes you happy that you get to work with the animals and make them have a better life as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we go that was some of the students from Ramsey Grammar Tristan Spite Lacey McMullen Paige Ansett and Daniel Cross all from year eight and thoroughly enjoying their studies there at the on-site agricultural farm Marion Arthur their subject leader for rural agricultural and environmental sciences put a lot of work into the farm there at Ramsey Grammar and I caught up with her to see how the farming was going and her recent awards well Marion you're fresh back after the open farm day it was a huge success it was, yeah. It was. Uh, weather was really good. Loads of people came, and yeah, loads of really, really good reviews as well. <laughs> and, yeah, and that's what it's all about: is that educational side, isn't getting people involved. And talking about involvement here at Ramsey Grammar on site, we have the animals. Now, this is a huge undertaking for you as a teacher, but getting the children involved is just brilliant. It is. To be honest, we have to go on a rotor. There's so many want to be involved. <laughs> um, if we just left it as a free for all, we'd probably have about 40 kids every morning. Oh, um, wow. And there's not quite enough poo to go around. <laughs> <laughs> but for you, Mary, as you started out as a teacher in the UK as a biology teacher, yep. what was the shift to the Isle of Man? It was the attraction of the animals, to be honest. Um, I used to work in a zoo um, as a, a lion keeper, monkeys and bears and wolves. Um, oh, wow. So the animals has always been a big thing. Yep. Um, then I trained as a biology teacher. And I think I hoped to go back into a zoo as uh, work in the education department. And this job came up and I thought it was just too good a chance to miss, really. Yeah. Plus and I like the TT as well. <laughs> 
<laughs> it is a big draw, isn't it? Yeah, and we're glad it's yeah. back this year. But that said, Marion, you've you've took it but it was in two hands. You've been getting involved here, not only on the island, but with the award side of uh, the agriculture, the, the school awards, the, the successes you've had since since it started in 2017. It's just been brilliant. Come on, give us a rundown of what you've been winning. Oh, I've had to write them down. Um, so 2017, we were the best secondary school farm, and that was across the British Isles. Now, that is a huge one on its own. It was a brilliant one, yeah. I was I was absolutely gobsmacked. I never thought for a second that we were going to win that one. Um, took a wee while to settle in. <laughs> um, the same year, we were um, finalists for the School Farm Leadership Award, um, and I was, I was really proud of that one. Because um, that's more a personal one for yourself, yeah. isn't it? The development of the little farm here in that yeah. handful of years yeah. to obviously get into them final few, because there's a lot of schools take part. There is, yeah. There's about 130 schools all across the, the British Isles, um, and obviously I've, I've sort of took over from my predecessor, and we sort of try and build on, on what's there. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was really good, and it was fact it was sort of voted on by other rural science teachers as well. Yeah, um, yeah. So that, that was good. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? We've got the um, 2018 was best use of the school farm in the curriculum. We're a finalist for that. Uh, 2019 was best use of the school farm in the curriculum runner-up. Um, so we got one up on that one. Um, 2019, uh, we also got Environmental Impact Award finalist. Um, and that was that was a whole school one, that one. That wasn't just the farm. Um, and 2021, um, we finally, or I finally got the School Farm Leadership Award winner. There we winner. go. Absolutely <laughs> <Finally>. brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> but that said, talking to the children, Marion, they, they love you as a teacher. They love Ramsey Grammar of yeah. what they're offering in the curriculum. Yeah. It's so important that we get it out there. It's a shame it's not in everyone's curriculum, but it's so important nowadays. Yeah, it is. I think I think it's amazing how um, we get students come in and some of them are really clued up about where their food comes from. Um, and some of them are quite happy that we... We obviously we, we send our pigs and our sheep away for meat yep. um, and it's sad when they go but they know they've had a really good life and they can follow them right through from birth up to the very last day um, and then go and get their meat from, from Tears and Ramsey um, so it, it's good they're sort of following all the way through but it's also on the other side we get lots of students that come in and sometimes it it could be a bit surprising but they don't know that like crisps come from potatoes um, so we kind of try and cater for everything yeah. right from that understanding all the way through to sort of farm to fork and and traceability and like you say the, the food production side of of thing it, it, it's been sort of left on the back burner expecting people know where food comes from it's now we're seeing maybe the idea of like you say milk comes from tesco and this yeah. kind of thing it must be quite frustrating as a teacher to see maybe a bit more could be done in other areas yeah, I think I, mean, I think we're quite lucky. The, the students here um, at the grammar school, they always amaze me um, because they, they, they are quite in, in touch with where the food comes from mostly. Um, but also when we talk about with lockdowns and, and COVID and stuff, um, suddenly it really flagged up that the stuff that we produce on the island, we could still get. Yeah, um, yeah. So we could get we could get bread from Ramsey Bakery. Um, we could get vegetables. We could get all those things because they're produced on island. But um, if we had anything like that again, obviously it's not here and yeah. we'd be rationing it. And yeah. Yeah, this is it. It's the, and also with animals comes responsibilities. Teaching young students at a young age, you know, to share their time, to look after and be responsible for other things or other beings. I, I think it's very good mentally and socially. Yeah, there's uh, there's, uh, there's a lot, quite a lot to say to that. Yeah, we, we certainly have quite a few students who sort of come down to us and it's it's just engaging with the animals. Um, and we, it's not, I suppose it's not something that we kind of we write into the curriculum. It's kind of like um, an unspoken thing. Um, but certainly we get students that come down and talk to the animals if they're feeling stressed and angry. Come and speak to the lambs, come and cuddle a lamb. You and me both, actually. Yeah, and I think there's, there's one quote that sticks with me from years ago. Um, and it was, it was one student who was sort of going a bit through a bit of a tough time. And uh, she said to me that um, she comes down to speak to the animals because people let her down, but they never do. And it was, wow, I never even thought about it like no, that. No. Um, but I think for a lot of kids, we don't even realise what an impact the farm has on them. Yeah, um, no, absolutely not. I know that we're passionate about everything to do with agriculture. It's sort of where we've wanted to be in life. But to see some of these students thinking about, oh, it could be a, a job for them or an industry they would like to get involved with and having that hands-on experience. Look, the, the children here just leaning over the fence, stroking <laughs> Martha. You know, she's a great big sow at the end of the day. No fear, but they... It's, you know, it's part of their life growing up as students. Yeah, yeah I mean, these guys, I mean, they, they, they're all year eight and they've, they've pretty much been on the farm pretty much twice a day since yeah. September. Um, yeah, you have. <laughs> all weathers, yeah. I miss students. 
You missed a few days, I yeah. A couple as well, I had she hasn't put yeah. on my she hasn't put wood at anyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, she does uh, sometimes, doesn't she? Yeah. But um, but yeah, I mean certainly, I mean these guys have been down um like since September, and they've been here through preparing the sheep for lambing. They've been getting stuck into lambing. Um, they've been here when um, just after Martha arrived. Um, with piglets were born like, the first week back after Christmas. Um, and they really get stuck into everything. When we've yeah. done the greenhouse, keeping the plants going for selling for open day and Angle everything, there. absolutely yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's something that uh, Daniel said before, it's something to be very proud of having the farm on site. And like, like I say, getting up close and personal with animals like this, it, it's just absolute, an absolute privilege. It is, it is, it's brilliant. You meant to say not to work with children and animals, but um, <laughs> I love it. It's yeah. great. I couldn't go back in the classroom full time. No. But it's, uh, it's brilliant. No. Mixing the outdoors and, uh, and, and inside as well. It's perfect. Mm. And in the pipeline, Marion, I do believe there is some buzzy bees on their way. Um, not just in the pipeline. They're here now. Oh. Um, <laughs> literally yesterday, oh, um, wow. day before yesterday. Um, yeah, we we it's been the plan for oh, must be about three years in, in the making, um, and it was our previous head teacher Annette Baker um, who, who started it off, and then we had all the lockdowns and COVID and everything got delayed, and uh, yeah, we, we've really just been trying to sort of time it so we've got everything ready when swarms are happening, yeah, and everything's yeah. built and everything's in place, and yeah, this year is the first year it's happened, yeah. So um, yeah, we've got um, five hives altogether. Plan is to get six. Um, two of them have got bees in at the moment. Um, and there's another hive that's been set up as a, as a bait yeah. hive um, to try and attract anyone that's just yeah. passing by. But there's plenty of foliage around here, isn't it? The golf yeah. course is just behind, you've got Milntown yeah. Gardens. Yeah. I suppose it's all perfectly in the vicinity, isn't it? There's lots <laughs> yeah. of foliage around for them to eat, to go and forage there, on. There really is, yeah. There, there is, I mean, they're, they're, they're sort of hidden out the way, down on the plots. Um, and we've got a little wildflower area that we're slowly building up there. I've been, that was another plan for about three years ago until <laughs> COVID hit. Um, but yeah, the area down there is sort of getting built up as a, as a wildflower area as well. Um, but yeah, there's, there's plenty around for them. Yeah, well, absolutely. Look at this here. I just, it's just brilliant. I, yeah, just standing there. Just perfect, did not you? <laughs> yeah. Soap in like early days, soap was made out of pig hair. P pig fat, I meant. Pig what? Pig fat? Yeah. Do you think... That do you think they make soaps out of pig fat now? No. No? I yeah, think I'm lots of products are still made from uses work. of animals. And also, did you know that pig hair. people used to use pig hair, pig hair as toothbrushes and hairbrushes? And horse hairs as heart strings. Yeah. And horse hair, hair as heart strings. strings. Do you think they use these products nowadays? The horse, the horse, the horse tail yeah. strings, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good. So what chores did you girls have to do when the the pigs came when they first arrived, the baby Looking piglets? Out. Out. A lot. And did you did, did you not mind? A little bit, but not really. Except not really. when they like get really hungry, they make a lot of and noise. And we fight over do the they? scraper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you take from having the animals around school? Like, what what do you really yeah. enjoy about it? It's like before the farm thing. I was like really like I couldn't even hold an animal. Oh and my god, she <laughs> couldn't hold like the chicks, I, but now she's like gotten used to it and now she can hold them. It's like small animals, I can't. <laughs> yeah. You didn't want to pick them up? It was like, I didn't. She to, yeah, I did. But she couldn't. Yeah. And now you've got all that confidence to tell the people about what the animals are, what, what, how to raise them, how to look after them. Something you're proud of? I don't know. Are you not proud, proud of them? <laughs> yes, I'm very proud of them. Good, that's all. <laughs> there we go, that was Marion Arthur, the subject leader for Rural, Agricultural and Environmental Sciences at Ramsey Grammar School. And hopefully we'll be catching up with Marion Arthur in the coming months to see how the Bee Project is progressing and what other news they have to tell us. That's all from this week's Countryside and we'll be back next week all being well. Simon will be with us. So from me, Kiri Kermode, we'll see you then. <laughs>